Top of the Props is brought to you by Barkingham Palace Dog Grooming at Lemire. 1 slash 10 Holiday Road Lemire, where every pup's a king or queen. Find them on Facebook, Barkingham Palace Dog Grooming, MacArthur. If you'd like to sponsor Top of the Props, contact us, the 81st Minute at Outlook.com. All right, so it's week three, episode three of Top of the Props, and we are on a roll. And it just gets better this week because, I'll tell you what, you've probably heard it on my, my Twitter feed and all across Facebook as well. Um, as, a, as a tragic Magpies fan growing up in the 90s, out at Arana Park, Camel Town Stadium or the, the Sports Stadium, whatever you want to call it, um, what, this bloke here led the way for many, many years, and then it... it Rolled on through to the West Tigers and eventually ended up with a premiership in 2005. Our guest this week is uh, West Tigers, Magpies and premiership winning legend, John Scandalis. How are you, Scando? Good, mate. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. So, look, let's rip right in and let's let's go back to the start. Um, and you probably get asked this a lot and you, you probably talk about this game a lot, particularly with Magpies fans. There, there wasn't too many out there that night. It was your debut uh, it was a freezing cold night. It's Friday, May 17th, and you're coming up against a, a, a motley crew-looking Penrith Panthers side, and we'll get to them in a second. But um, a, as a Sarah Redfern boy, as a, a Minto lad coming through, and at the time, too, a lot of people won't remember, but, you know, of course, for that semi-final in 96 at the back end of the year, which you played in as well, the Magpies as a club and as a region had real momentum. What was it like coming in for your first game at 19 years of, 19 years of age, starting in the front row? Oh, mate, yeah, look, you, words and, you know, really can't explain the feeling. That's, and I don't think that changes even now to the boys um, when anyone debuts. You know, I think the excitement starts from the moment Tommy walked in and said, mate, I'm, I'm playing you in first grade and mm. you don't know if I should be scared, nervous or excited. You know, you, all those feelings sort of come at once. Um, mate, fantastic, you know, proud. You said, you know, you just mentioned there it wasn't much of a crowd, which you're pretty much right. It was probably only... I think eight, nine thousand. But mm. when when you run out, it's like there's forty five thousand people out there. So, um, and then you know to hear your school friends and your close mates and guys that you played with in your junior league cheering you on, it's yeah, it's a fantastic and, and surreal feeling. So, what was what was Tommy's message before the game? I, I can just guess what the kind of things that came out of his mouth. But what did he say to you <laughs> before the game? Uh, uh, I won't repeat everything you said. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you might get a few people switching off, but um, uh, basically just said, don't give up, mate. Just whatever you do, do your job. Um, enjoy it. Um, and we, it's going to be a tough hit. For some reason, he knew it was going to be a tough match because I think um, there was a few things in the media um, saying, you know, he, he's bringing up this this kid who wants mm. to, who likes to have a blue and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think that set it up, set it up all night. So, um, mate, he basically just said, have a go and, and, and don't stop whatever you do. And that was, that was what I took on board. And mate, I gave every opportunity, I gave myself every opportunity to, to make a statement. And, you know, thankfully, I, thankfully I did. You, you look physically ready, but, and, and we'll touch on this a little bit later as well, but you look mentally ready as well, because if, for, for those that, that don't know, there's about 30 minutes of the match, like the, the highlights, or if you want to call them lowlights, because it was such a, a rough <laughs> game, it's on YouTube for everyone out there, but um, Brent Stewart, he, he, was a, he was a quality front rower, he was a Kiwi too, wasn't he? He got injured the week before, was, was that the reason you came in that night? Yeah, that's correct, he did his knee against uh, Parramatta, Parramatta Stadium, and I was playing um, Jersey Flag at the time. Uh, I sort of you were playing flag. My... Yeah, well, back yeah, flag back then was nineteen twenties and yeah, twenty ones. So um, I was playing flag, and then sorry, you didn't have twenty ones. You had flag, and then you had mm. reserve grade. And um, yeah, I was playing flag. I, I had a couple of games on the bench for reserve grade during the year, and then um, lucky for me, mate, I was playing great football. And um, I think Kenny McGuinness was the, at the time was the one that said to Tommy, mate, I think you should give him a go. He's ready to go, and Tommy. Yeah, lucky enough to listen to him and, and tap me on the shoulder. And unfortunately for Brent Stewart, um, yeah, he, he had a recap for the year, but that hasn't changed to this day. You know, most people get their opportunity due to unfortunate, you know, people getting injuries. So I, I made sure I, I made the most of it. Yeah, and, and if you look at some of these Panthers players, um, and, and, you know, all due respect to all these blokes because they all played first grade and they're, and they're all hard nuts. But if you look at some of these names in this Penrith team that you took on that night, uh, Waddell... 
Um, Carter, Steve Carter. Yeah. Like, I know he was a 5'8", but, you know, he was just into everything. Brown, Darren Brown, McNamara, yeah. Danny Farah. Like, all these blokes. Did you know, like, obviously, as you mentioned, there was a bit of talk during the week as well, and, and that wouldn't have helped your cause, you know, <laughs> starting in, in, in the front row against all these blokes. So you were prepared for, for a war before you even got out in the field? Yeah, we was we were. I was actually the way Tommy prepared me. I was, but um, when you mentioned those names, and, and this is no disrespect to those guys, I, I really didn't know much about them because I was playing flag. So yeah, um, it wasn't. It was probably a good thing that I didn't. Mm. Um, but now, when you look back at it, mate, they were hardheads. You know, they were they were they were um, seasoned in yeah. our first grade, or back then, our first first graders. You know, they were. So and speaking of Woodell, you still to talk about Steve Woodell. You know, mm. probably the worst person I could have had a think <laughs> with on the night because <laughs> I'm sure he had about a hundred hundred of them before yeah. he got to me. So um yeah, see so seasoned campaigners and um but again I, I didn't really care about that. I wasn't focused on them. I was I was just so nervous and just so so um worried about myself wanting to, you know, put on a good performance, not mm. only because I wanted to keep playing first grade, it was because I was at I was playing in front of like a home crowd. I was yep. Um, you know, I got to play with um, guys that I grew up with. You know, Kenny and Kevin McGuinness. We've gone through um, Minto Cobras together, and and then here we are playing first grade together. So there were so many reasons why I wanted to do well, and obviously, you know, not let Tommy down because he's, he gave him, he gave me this chance. So, um, but yeah, luckily, I, I guess lucky I didn't know about those guys because probably could have been a, a whole different story. Yeah, and have you watched that game back on YouTube? Yeah, I actually. Um, <laughs> That's one I, of the somebody... dirtiest games we've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, it was good, mate. I think it was one of the. I think I think the new rule came out then. There was a few fines or something. Or yeah. They, they um yeah. What do you call it? They suspended a few fines and yep. and all that sort of stuff. But um oh mate, it was a bit of fun. It was it was fans. Even better that we even better that we won the game. So um it was it was old school rugby league. I'm just glad and and happy that I got to be a part of that and. and and experience that a little bit, you know, because that's mm. that's that's something that we 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 don't experience anymore or we'll talk about. And and I mentioned momentum before. Now I was sitting up in so if you remember those the two old rickety wooden grandstands, yeah. I was up yeah, in one of them. Those. Yeah, I was up in one of them with my dad and and one of my brothers, and and we were freezing cold. And I think <laughs> it would have been about eight or nine. And and apart from I, I think one of the memories I've got is is Ken McGuinness scoring the winning try right in front of us. But there was another point there too. And for years, I, I thought that it was you, but it was Damien Kennedy. So I mentioned Darren Brown before. There was another scrap in there. And I don't know if you remember on the field or, or if there was any talk yep. of it, but I'm sure Darren Brown spat on Damien Kennedy that night. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty spot on. We, I was actually, funny enough, I was with Damien Kennedy the other night. Oh, um, there you go. We, we had a bit of a reunion, myself, Damien, and um, Ken, uh, Kevin McGuinness. And uh, we were talking about it. And yeah, it was, it was Damien Kennedy. And, yeah. They were they were hit they were face to face and he he put this big golly on his face and um, <laughs> mate, he he lost the, he lost the plot and we actually didn't know we at that at that time we didn't know we just thought he was just losing his losing his mind and I yeah. think Paul Langback actually slapped him in the face or something so mate you got to settle down you know yeah. and um, after the game when we did the review and all that we we noticed. Um, well, we saw what had, what had happened, so we, yeah, it was, he didn't miss him, put it that way. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, a bit of, bit of a grab back, but anyway, it stays on the field. That's it. So. And, and and you mentioned, too, that you came through Jersey Flag, and bang, you, you're in the, the middle of Campbelltown Stadium, or Arana Park, uh, as it was at the time. Um, as a local boy, in those mid-90s, now, I could feel it as a kid, the momentum, like I, I, I touched on a couple of times. Did you, when did you realise, when we, when you were a little bit more settled in that first grade side a little bit later in the year, could you feel that the sense of um, something special happening at the Magpies in that 96 season? You know, obviously we'll, we'll talk about the Andrew Willis field goal in a minute, but um, could you feel that in the in the community at the time? Oh, I felt the excitement. I probably was a bit too young and inexperienced to feel the sort of momentum. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I was just at that age when you're, when you're your first year, your first grade, even your second um, you know, you're worried about just holding on your position. You're not really focusing on, on where you, you know, how the the team's going. I guess mm. in, in a way. Um, even when I made the semis, I thought, you know, and, I, and we'll talk about this later on. I thought, wow, this is this is easy. You know, yeah. making semi final semi final football first year. Um, I was I was over the moon. I was excited. Probably not as excited as some of the other players because, mm. you know, you talk about you talk guys like, you know, Langmack and Craig Coleman and Andrew Leeds. Um, Steve Georgialis at the time, yep. who probably hadn't played semi-finals, you know, 
for a while. So yep. they were, they were, you know, they were switched on, ready to go. Mm. Um, whereas I was like, well, you know, I'm playing, I'm playing. One, I'm playing first grade, and two, I'm playing in the semi-finals. How how good is this? So I didn't really, I didn't really notice the momentum or the, the excitement as much as other people did. But yep. I, I did, I did later on, or post, you know, further further down the year, I I sort of you look back and you remember how excited everyone was, and I think it was also the fact that we had so many juniors coming through. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there was myself. If you look at the team, there was myself, Kevin McGuinness, Kevin McGuinness, and Siri Lang. I don't know if you remember Siri yeah, Lang. Yeah, I do, we, yeah. He went on he was a local, Melbourne yeah. Storm as well, I think. That's, yeah, that's correct. He was a local junior. Um, I'm trying to think. He was, you know, Kennedy. Newton had some, Kennedy, Damien Kennedy was a... Well, Danny, Damien Kennedy was originally from Forbes, but he oh, okay. didn't come down. I'm yeah. oh, sorry, not Forbes, um, Park. So, yeah. no, four year Forbes. And he... Um, who was Brett Hodson had a time, you know, later yeah. on in the season. You said year, Willie so. Newton, didn't you? Newton. Willie Newton, yeah, yeah. Willie Newton. Um, uh, Adam Doyle. You yes. Know, so all these players, all these players were sort of coming through the junior ranks. So we, we had a really, a really strong sort of um, rep- rep- representation of, of young juniors. So that excitement was definitely flowing through. I'll, I'll send um, Doyle an inbox on Facebook later and let him know that he's got a mention, mate. You'll love that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh. I don't, know, I don't know what will get bigger, his ass or his head. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, I, I do want to mention two guys here, mate, and one of them isn't a front rower because this is supposed to be top of the props. But there's two blokes that, that uh, apart from yourself, and Andrew Leeds was probably my, my, my favourite player coming through um, at that time. No disrespect, Scando, but you're in the top three. Yeah, that's right, mate. Uh, that's there's, all right. there's two other blokes. I, I, I just want to get some feedback on what they were like maybe to play yeah. with and what they were like as, as maybe... Um, as blokes that you know, um, you know, off the field training. What Cherry Mesher and Harvey Howard, the two very underrated oh. players. I mean, they were absolute like they were guns. They were really, really good players, weren't they? Mate, Cherry Mesher. I'll start with Mesh. He top like you can't meet a nicer, more passionate guy ever. He just, mate, he, you know, he bled the magpie. And even when he went to the West Tigers for that couple yeah. of season or two, you know, he had passion coming out of him every every day and. He showed that even when he went into the coaching side of, well, when I say coaching, the strength and conditioning side of it, you know, his his passion and his his dedication to his his um his role was, yeah, you couldn't question it ever. Um, mm. uh, funny you mentioned that name because I actually spoke to him today. So he's doing some wonderful things for for Batlow, um, for the Fires. So he's raising, stuff. As, yeah, as you know, he's from Batlow, so he's helping raise a bit of money for all that um, for all those guys. But mm. um, yeah, as a footballer, mate, just crazy mental. <laughs> he, um, we used to call him the Mad Moroccan. So he was just, mate, he was, um, he had a switch where he would go from this nice, placid guy on the, on off the field. And then I don't know what it was. He put the jersey on and he put a bit of deep heat on and, mate, he just turned into this, this animal who just wanted to kill people. So, um, yeah, he was, he was fantastic, mate. And, and I have a lot of respect for Mesh. Uh, Harvey Howard, yeah, mate, great bloke, funny. Mm. Loved it. He was a clown, you know, he just, he was one of, he was the guy that, um, you know, entertained everybody and, and just you made sure everyone was, you know, enjoying themselves and, and made great footballer. Mm. Uh, t- tough. He used to be a winger, funny enough. I don't know yeah, if you remember no, that. No, I didn't know that, no. Yeah, he used to be a winger, so he had a bit of speed behind him and then he he loved his power cleans and his uh, his uh, squats. He had legs the size of cannons, made yeah. them massive. So I think that helped him. And yeah, definitely very underrated. And mate, off he went to the Brisbane, I think Brisbane, and he ended up winning yeah. the premiership in 2000. 2000. Yep. So, yeah, so he he had a great, quite a journey. I think he's. I haven't really spoken to Harvey Howard in a while. Yeah. I'm not really sure what he's up to, but I'm he, pretty he's sure down, he's he, still in. Sorry, I was just going to say he's running. That's right. He's running a retirement village. He's the manager down in Bowral. Oh wow! There you go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. I'll probably have to try to. Hopefully, we have a reunion <laughs> when we get out of this stuff and have a reunion. And have to yeah. catch up. So that's nice. Yeah. No, good bloke. Good blokes, mate. Good picks on both of them because they're yeah, really, really down to earth, um, passionate guys. And, and, and we'll fast forward a, a, a little bit later now. It's the back end of the season. And, and a lot of younger fans will uh, remember Monday Night Football, the last version of it. And it was, it was basically made for TV, right? But in the mid-90s when they brought Monday Night Football back, it was huge. And the Magpies, they needed to win this game to stay in the finals hunt. And it wasn't the final round. Some people, they, their memory gets a little bit hazy and they, they just talk about the fairy tale field goal and all that <laughs> stuff. But there was a few rounds after that. But this was a Monday night game against the Bears. I believe at the time we were calling him Jason Trader, the captain of the Bears. <laughs> he was coming back to Campbelltown. He missed his first goal that night right in front. Um, I want to talk about Tommy's game plan because I watched that Bears game back the other night. 
Tommy, Tommy wasn't much of a game plan guy, was he? As a coach, it was, <laughs> it was more about just getting into him and ripping in and doing your best. But if you if you watch the way you played against the Bears, you you not only beat him in passion, but just the, the 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 individual talent of the side still got you across the line. How much how much was it was it with Tommy, um, technical and game plans, and how much was it just get out there and rip in for me? Ah. Uh... You can, say you can say 100% passion if you want. <laughs> 100% passion, mate. It was, uh, no, look, Tommy, had, Tommy was all about being the aggressive team and, you know, basically the old school passion out of the park sort of yep. thing. Yep. Um, he did have a technical side to him and I think he got a lot of help um, from, at the time, I think it was uh, Wayne, Wayne Ellis and Mark Egan at the time yep. that helped him with the technical side. And then later in the years, Paul Langmack was sort of transitioning from you know, that uh, player to, um, as you know, we all know, he went as a coach. So mm. I think that, so, that sort of crept in even when he was playing. So he had Paul Lamax, Steve Jorjalis and Andrew Leeds, who at that time were pretty much experienced. You know, we're talking 250-plus football, first-grade game players. So he had a bit of help around that area too. Um, but a lot of it was about passionate, being passionate, being aggressive, um, not taking a backward step and, you know, putting the fear into him basically and saying, they, they're not going to want to run at you or play against you because they're that scared. So, yep. um, and yeah, that Bears game was, was you know, we were lucky enough to have, you look at the side, I don't know if you remember, you know, Andrew Willis, uh, Sierra Lane, Kevin McGuinness, Kevin McGuinness, mm. uh, Brandon Pearson. You know, we had a lot of talent and skill um, in that team. So yep. you mix that with a few um, hardheads um, in, the, in the forwards and, you know, we, got a, we had a good mixture. So, and obviously a, a sensational kick from, from Junior. So... Yeah, and, and that was a big one too. Now, this is just this is memory as well. I think on the front of the, the advertiser, which is one of the local papers out in Campbelltown, one of them uh, on, on the next week had Andrew Willis on the front cover and it said that he practised 10 field goals the week before and missed all of them. And Willie Newton, <laughs> Willie Newton was supposed to take the shot, but he was tackled on, on the last. Yeah, I don't remember that, but you're probably, you're probably right because um, yeah, Willie Newton did have a, a fair kick on him. So, yeah. Um, and and yeah, I can't. I didn't. I don't remember seeing Junior practicing, but if he did, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. <laughs> Could just he, been he, a G he, up from the paper. Uh, yeah, I think so, mate. I think you all that, or he missed all of them because um, yeah, I don't think he was preparing to kick it anyway. So probably better, best that he did. He didn't practice because yeah, he, he um he, he slotted the the important one anyway. So. Yeah, and if you look at that too, I mean, you, you make the semi-finals. You verse Cronulla at Parramatta. You just go down. I think it was twenty to twelve, um, but it was a, a fantastic season. You look at 97, it's probably a disappointment because I think you went down to the Crushers who were running dead last in the ARL comp and you yeah. missed the semis. Um, yeah. And then 98, 99, mate. Like, uh, uh, did you guys, did, could you feel it uh, as players, particularly 99, that this was the end? And, and how much did you know about what was happening off the field? Um, you know, talk about mergers with Canterbury and then Bowman coming at the last second. Did you, did you guys discuss that or was it just, just knuckle down and try to play football? Uh, mate, just well, look. It, obviously, it crept in some discussions. We, we tried to we tried to um, uh, forget about it and just let it sort of work itself out. But you know, it's pretty hard when your you know your your career and your and your future you know lies in other people's hands. You know, every, most people are either coming off contract or yep. you know they were hoping they were going to be signed by the merger if we did merge with anyone. So you know, it was it was a, it was a tough time. It was it was quite nervous. Um, you know, I was only. I was lucky. Lucky enough, I was one of them that was still on contract. So mm. for me, it was about you know, do I do I go to the merger or do I um, look for another team? Basically, so I was one of the lucky ones. Um, but it was tough. I didn't really feel it coming early in the year. Like we felt, we were, we just wanted to be games. You know, we came mm. last in '98. We got we got smacked. You know, and I think '98 or '99. One of that. I don't know, I don't know which one it was, but. You know, we, we hold the record for the highest points yeah. uh, scored scored against. I think it's like 900 and something. So mm. um, I, I have that unfortunate title next to my name. It's not your fault, mate. You've done your job. Blame yeah. everyone else. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's what I'll, I'll keep doing that until I die. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was a bit nervous. You know, we were coming last again. We weren't winning games. Well, we weren't even close to winning games. I think we'd won two games that year. One was against Penrith by one point at Parramatta Stadium. Mm. Um and I think one of them might have been against South at Camelltown from memory. So I can't really, we didn't really have a happy year. So, yep. you know, we were, we were just hoping, you know, for whatever whatever came out of the merger, um, we were part of it. 
And uh, uh, that's a good lead into um, my next point is that when you guys did merge and became the West Tigers, um, I believe six players from the Magpies squad in 1999 went across and made the, the West Tigers squad. That included yourself, uh, Steve George Ellis, the McGuinness brothers, Cherry Mesher, Brenton Pomery. Um, so they were the six. Did you guys? So did you guys have to travel into Leichhardt? Is that where you guys were based in in that off season leading into two thousand? Was that was that different? Yeah, well, yeah, we're based at Leichhardt. Look, they try to for the first couple of years they try to split it. You know, do the yeah, you know, to make it make it fair as possible. So they did you know two weeks or three weeks at Leichhardt, mm. um, a week a week maybe at Campbelltown and things like that. That wasn't really working yeah. because there's just so much, um, you know, dis- distraction by you know moving to different venues and all that sort of stuff. So mm. we. We by, by round, I don't know, actually by, I don't know, it might have been each in this off-season, I can't really remember, but I think we made the, the, the decision to stay at Leichhardt. So, yeah, yeah travelling to Leichhardt every day from Campbelltown was, um, yeah, a new thing for me, but <laughs> mate, I, I would have travelled to Gosford if I had to, if I was going to get to play football. So um, that, that didn't really concern me too much. The travel wasn't I, – I still do it now. You know, I'm, I'm still yeah. living in Campbelltown and – I work at Concord, so yep. um, you know it makes no difference to me. I'm, I'm just—I was glad to be part of the team. And, and let's go to round one now. Obviously, everyone knows John Scandala scored the first ever try for West Tigers. I believe that's yeah. also in your your Twitter handle as well on your on your, your Twitter page. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> now I, I remember too being in the crowd for that one as well. And and one of the memories I've got is is sitting in the Western Grandstand, the old, the old Grandstand which survived the knockdown, and that side of yep. the ch- that, that side of the crowd chanting West West. And then at the same time, the other side of the field, that everyone else is chanting "Tigers, Tigers." Could you feel that on the crowd? Was was it a different feeling going out in that round one game against the Broncos? Uh, to be honest, that's the first time I've heard that, and uh, I never, I never heard that, I never experienced, felt yeah. that that was okay. happening. Um, mate, no, we were as players, we were, we were um, joint, you know, we were joint venture. We, that was us. That's how yep. we. We, we spent the off season. Um, you got to remember there was six from Magpies. There would have been what six, maybe six or seven from Bowmain. Yep. And the rest were made up of, you know, yeah, that's right. Terry Hills, and Joe Hopper, Terry Terry Hills. Yep. Exactly. So, you know, there was no time for us to sit there and go, oh, it's a West thing or a, or a Bowmain mm. thing. We mm. Just if we if we had focused on that as players, um, you know, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have played and done our job. So, from day one, a junior was great. You know, junior could have easily had. And about our main influence because he, you know it's sorry when I say junior Wayne Pierce yep. as the coach, um, he could have had an influence on on the more about main side, but he was great. He didn't. He he knew what his role was, and that was to to make make sure everyone understood it was West Tigers. So as players, staff, and um, you know to a point, I guess some of the most of the administration we were West Tigers, and that's how we we played. So and as I look to this day, you know you're still going to have your diehards at that, unfortunately. Um, still just want to barrack either for West or Balmain. Yeah, yeah. Um, but from, for, for me and for everybody that played um, that day, that round one, um, we were West Tigers. Oh, and that's a story for another day. But I, I look, I, the, just quickly on that, that whole Tigers versus Magpies thing now, I mean, that is so far in the past. There's kids that have been born and only know West Tigers. And I, <laughs> and I think people need to realise that. And I, I, I think people are starting to understand on both sides that just let it be. And let's try, yeah, try to move correct. on. Well, my, my kids only know me playing for, for the West Tigers. You know, I shove on a, a, video, a video or or they see me in a Magpies jersey and they, they go, what, what, what's that? <laughs> what, what, who are you playing for there? Like, that's, you know, it's not. they think it's in black and white. So, um, that long time ago. So, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you there, mate. Did you get the ball down for that try? 100%. Did you? Don't ask Joel Kane. Yeah, don't ask Joel Kane, though. <laughs> he scored a 1,000 points prob- that day, didn't he? Well, I was going to say, you're probably the wrong person to ask, but do you remember how many tries he scored? Uh, I, I want to say three, but I'm not going to... Was it three? No, you, yeah, no, you're correct. Was that's, it three? that's the problem, see? That's the problem with Joel Kane. See, he scored three tries, but I scored one, but no one even remembers how many tries he scored. <laughs> no one even remembers that. <laughs> Out of the 24 points that he scored, that he, he, he scored 20 of them. And no one even cares. They all just remember the first try. John, so. mate, it's the butterfly effect. You've got to let him know that if you don't score that first try, he doesn't score three tries after that. Exactly. So, so. he needs to be very grateful. <laughs> uh, it was a try, mate. Fair and square. T-R-Y. Try. Uh, just to go back quickly, you talked about the preseason leading into 2000. There's a good video. I think it's a two-part series that the footy show did at the time. And you can see that on YouTube. Um, I think it goes right through the preseason into that first game. And um, there's cameras in the sheds at halftime and all the rest. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure you guys, like it ended up being a draw, but I'm sure Craig Field got the ball on about the 30 right in front of the sticks. And he should have taken a shot at field goal. And he passed the ball for some reason. But I don't know why he did that. But anyway, it was a 24-all draw yeah. and it was a good start of the year. Um, I want to talk about something that also happened in 2000. Now, you guys are sitting second on the ladder leading yeah. into round 18. So we're almost at the end of the season, John. And the week before, you're playing the snow, which is a historic game down in Canberra. You just go down in that one. Um, now, Sunday afternoon at Penrith Stadium, the first half, I'm, I'm pretty sure this game's on YouTube as well. You absolutely yeah, give on. it to the Panthers. 31-8 at half time, and it just looks like you're going to put 70 or 80 on them and come back down um, the northern road and get hammered at West Leagues that night and, and keep rolling on. But second half, pull a tour, and, and they just go mad, and you end up losing... 32-31. Can, can you remember that day? Did, or was it just all happened in the blink of an eye and that was it? Very, very clearly I remember that day because it was almost the start of our downfall for it, the, yeah, the year. Yeah, yep. Um, yeah, I remember the game. We were, yeah, mate, we were playing great football. You know, game plan was working well. Um, you know, Hopper Whitey was doing his WWF wrestling on the pole with, and I think that's probably the, the start of where they got really pissed off because yep. Matt Adams said at the time, um, stood in his way and pushed him out of the way because we were, you know, we were just running the muck on him, like you said. And then yep. uh, they did they did two things. They they changed Big Tony Pulitzer to the uh, right side. He was playing on the left, and they um, just kept giving him the ball. That was the two things they did. Yeah. So once they did that, um, I don't know what happened and why it happened, but um, it just they, we just leaked points and yeah, they they came back and like you said, uh, beat us thirty two thirty one and. I think from then on, and um, it, it just, yeah, I don't know what happened, but the wheels fell off, unfortunately. Yeah, and, and speaking of, I've just got the record here, and I, I won't take too long on this, John, but you went loss, loss, win, win, then four straight losses, and an upcoming 10th. So, I mean... Oh, typical uh, West Tigers, ninth or 10th, isn't it? That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. right. But it, I, I want to go back a little bit further uh, before, or maybe it came after that, I, I can't remember from memory, but there was a night down in... At Olympic Park in in Melbourne, um, and I think it was the night Jared McCracken got dropped on his head by Marcus By yeah. and Steve Carney. Even before that happened, I remember there was a few injuries. Ken McGuinness played five eight that night, and he'd done a pretty good job from from memory. But um, did it just become, you know, the harder you tried, you know, the the, the further you sunk? Yeah, we, look, we ran out of troops as well. Like you said, we lost um, we lost McCracken, we lost uh, Hopawati to an elbow. Um, we lost, I think, oh, and Craig got injured at the yeah. time. Um, who else was that? There was, there was a couple more, and I can't remember mm. it, but we did have, a, we had, we did have, unfortunately, a, a pretty big uh, injury toll towards the end, and that just, um, and being a young club too, we weren't really, in terms of depth, we didn't have that, mm. you know, that depth to sort of come up and, you know, I think Ben Galee might, might have made his debut at the time. Um, uh, I can't remember if... Um, uh, Luke O'Donnell, he might have been the year yeah, after, but we no, had a few. Yeah, he was around that time, yep. Yeah, so I think we had a few people that, like kids that were coming through, but they just weren't, you know, they just hadn't played any fo- fo- football to, to sort of make a, uh, make a dent for us. So, mm. um, yeah, so we just did have, we did have an unfortunate run of injury, but yeah, that's, yeah, unfortunately, that's every team as well. So we just didn't handle it um, right. And yeah, like you said, we finished, we went from second to, to, to 10th, which was unfortunate for us. Yeah, and, and 01, 02, kind of right-off seasons. Um, change of coach, Terry Lamb comes in, a few dramas and a couple of suspensions for off-field stuff. But um, <laughs> through that time as well, um, you also, um, through 2001 to 2003, um, a young Lebanese bloke comes in and starts developing. Robbie Farrow comes in at dummy half, plays a few games. I think for a while there, he interchanged with Ben Galeer. Uh, Brett Hodgson comes back. Tim Sheens brings down Scott Prince from, from the Cowboys. And a little skinny Kiwi kid called Benji Marshall debuts one Sunday afternoon at Campbelltown against the Knights. And he's put 50 on him. You, he's also won the, the, the Sevens in 2004. Yep. It, was, it was building nicely. Because from memory as well, 2004, you missed the semis in the last game. You, you lost to the Knights in Newcastle, I think it was. And that would have got you to the semis in 04, wouldn't it? Correct, yeah. We, um, we were lost to... Who was it? A Camelltown first, which we needed to win. I think we had to win one out of the last three or something. Yeah, okay. one out of the last. So I can't remember. No, sorry, it was two out of the last three. We had to win, and we won. Sorry, we did win one at Camelltown. And then we needed to beat Newcastle, which you're right. And we, yeah, we, it was Robbie O'Davis' last game, mm. um, which was always going to be tough to 
to win in Newcastle when when one of their favourite sons is retiring. And um, yeah, they they unfortunately they beat us and we missed out again on the on the semi final. Uh, yeah. Well, when I when I say again, we missed out on the, on the semis um, spot. Um, but yeah, we learned we learned a lot from that year. So um, if there's anything to take out of it, uh, that's that's there's probably it was probably a good thing for us. Was that was that Robbie O'Davis farewell game? Was that the one where Robbie Beckett put his nose right across, like smashed O'Davis's nose across his face with a shoulder charge? It was actually. Was, am I wrong? No, That's wrong. you're right. You're right. He did smash his nose, <laughs> but it wasn't from that. It was from um, the, the from my memory, and I, I probably have to go back. I'm sure, pretty yeah. sure the the whistle the whistle had blown, and um, Robbie was coming sort of Robbie O'Davis was coming in to run the ball, sort of you know finish the finish the game, but whoever came in, I can't remember who the forward was, mm. came in like and just whacked him one, so basically tackled him, but he tacked him around the head and ended up breaking in his, his nose. In his last that game. In his last game, yeah. I'm pretty sure, unless 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 he did that a few weeks prior and then he just redid it again that game, mm. so I can't remember. I just remember his nose being all over the place. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that would have been it. Did you, yeah. Would you stay in Newcastle that night for a drink or would you come straight back down? Nah, I think we came back. I don't know. I, mean, I was I was devastated to be honest. I didn't yeah. think I I still remember being pretty devastated because, you know, I was I was like twenty eight, twenty nine at the time. Mm. Um, you know, I hadn't played semi since ninety six. You know, again, every, another year had passed and I thought, well, I guess this is my fate, you know, to be one of those guys that plays two hundred plus games and never get to play in the semi final or a grand final. So yeah. um yeah, I was I, I, I remember being pretty devastated. But I got, I felt better just in time for Mad Monday, so I was okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you think about that? Like, you know, like after a big game, you know, it takes you a while to get to bed, and some some players don't get get to bed till about three, four in the morning because of the adrenaline. Would you think about that? That you know, your last thoughts when you roll over, you know, am I ever going to play semis? You know, you watch, you know, you're probably having a beer at a mate's house and you're watching grand finals and all this stuff. Would you think about that in your own head? And would it would it race and say, am I ever going to get to do this? A hundred percent, and I think any person in football would lie if they said they didn't. You know, you you play and you dream to to be there. You want to win a grand final. You want to you want the ultimate prize. Origins in Australia and all that they're awesome, and you know everyone strives to do that as well. But to to win a grand final with guys that you've spent you know basically ten months of your life with, life with, mm. um, and to be part of history forever uh, is what everyone strives to do. So um, you don't get to do it. I think. Oh, I can't. I can't speak for anyone. I can't really say that because I, I did. But if, I, I still think now, if I didn't get to do it, and I don't know if I could watch a grand final again or or semi final, because I'd, I'd be. It's not that I didn't want it or like it. I think I'd just be jealous that yeah. I didn't get to do it. So, um, I'm, yeah, I feel so privileged and honored that I, I did get one to win one. All right. So we're going to talk about 2005 now, and, and a lot of people out there want us to break down. 2005, and and that's fair enough too. And I'm, I'm sure you speak about this more than any other season in your career. It starts in round one. You go down to Parramatta, and it's it ends up 28 to 12 or 30 to 10, whatever it is. And it's kind of all right. Well, we, you know, a lot of experts would go, all right. Well, West Tigers, you know, they might make eight, they might might make ninth, and then round two and round three, you beat you beat the Bulldogs in round two, the defending premiers, 37 36 at Homebush, in an, an amazing game. And then round yeah. three, I know the Bulldogs won the comp in 04, but the Roosters through about 2002 to about 2004, those three years, they were the absolute benchmark. And you beat them 32-26, also away, and that one's at Sydney Football Stadium. That's an amazing two weeks of football. And to do it the way you did, that started something later in the year that no one could imagine. Like, no, one had, no one had any right. The West Tigers players, yourself, Tim Sheens, anyone, fans out there, would have, would have never thought that those two games would have started or led to something later in the year that ended up happening, and that was a grand final win. Yeah, mate, that's. I think you're pretty spot on there. You know, we were. You know, when you when you lose the first game or first two games or whatever it is, mm. people people normally go back to the previous year. Go, oh, here they go again. Yeah, I think we were tattered. You know, we weren't really made. We weren't really tipped to to even get to the semis because we were such a young side. Mm. Um, and we had so many people, so many players making their de- debut, so they didn't really give us too much of a chance. Um, however, like every team does in off season, you build trust and you build belief. And you know, you, within the playing group, you know, you know what you're capable of. And you know, after spending an off season watching Benji, Robbie, Chris Hines, and Bryce mm-hmm. Gibbs, Lee Fortin do what they 
what they do and how and how great they were in off season. I, you know, I, I went in with belief and probably more belief than I had ever before. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, you do get to that first round and you, you unfortunately lose and you go, oh crap, this could be a long year. But you know, you you stay strong and that's why Tim Sheens is such a great coach. Such a great coach. He he makes sure you continue to to work hard um, and and keep believing that you can you can do it. So after those two games, you, you go to Christchurch and you beat, you beat the Warriors. But then from there, you got four straight losses, four in a row. <laughs> um, yeah. And then so from there, same thing, West Tigers, you know, good side, great to watch. Everyone, back then, and, and this was for years to come, everyone loved watching West Tigers. Sunday afternoon, wherever it was, it was just amazing to watch. But then from round 10, you guys win 11 and you only lose three. And I still get people at the pub and they like ribbing me and, and saying, oh, West Tigers, you know, it was a... You know, they got lucky. Um, it was a soft comp. All these things. If you go through and look at the teams you won, you didn't just beat the, the, the top teams, like Parramatta, St. George and Brisbane, or St. George of Lawara and Brisbane. They were, they were the, the top teams in 2005. You, you, you didn't just beat them, but you put real points on them. All of them. Yeah. E- even in the yeah. semifinals. You smashed them. Yeah, yeah, 100% agree with you, mate. Because people say they are the Dragons, but you think about it. We did beat them. We beat them during the season. Yep. Not only did we beat them. Um, yeah, we, we we smashed them, and also in in the semi-finals where they had their strongest team. I don't think they had anyone out at the mm. time. So, um, you know, we were playing, and I go back to we were, we believed in each other, and we trained so hard with each other, and we knew what we were capable of. And you know, and you can't at that time you don't think of that. I didn't, you know, if you asked me at round nine, two thousand and five, mm. you know, can you can you feel something? I would, I probably would have said no. I just I'm glad that we're winning and we're playing well. Yeah, but. As you you know, as it happens, and you and you get through the year, and you look back at it now, you go, well, yeah, we actually played, you know, free style football where mm. we just enjoyed each other's style, and you know, we backed our we backed our off season training on the field because we did, you know, we mate, I, I don't think I ever passed so many balls in my life. Shins <laughs> made us pass, you know, for everyone. He wanted everybody on the field, doesn't matter if you're a fullback or front row. Um, or whatever he, you have to be able to pass the ball yep. because it's the, you know, it's the basic of the game to be able to catch and pass. Mm. Um, if you can't do that, then yeah, you, you're basically just a battering ram. So everybody knew how to th- throw, throw a nice ball. Everyone knew how to catch and pass. Um, he wasn't scared for you to, you know, if you wanted to be, if you wanted to chip and chase something. I mean, he didn't care what position as long as you practiced it at training. Yeah. Um, you could do it on the field. He would let you do it on the field. So yeah. um, that's the type of team and that's the type of style we played. And, and again, we, we, we backed each other in the field with it. You know, Benji probably threw, I don't know, 10 balls on the ground before, you know, and maybe two really good ones. But we knew he, the good ones would really pay off. You know, so yeah. that was the type of play he was. And, and you mentioned Tim Sheens there. Does, does it show how, how great a coach he was? Because some coaches, and, and I'm just off the top of my head, some of the coaches today, they're very stuck, or not stuck in their ways, but they've got absolute ways that they coach. And clubs bring coaches in for players to play under that style. Where you look at Tim Sheens with that 2005 team, and I think you just touched on it. He, he understood the players he had, so he changed his game plans and, and his systems to encompass what those players could do rather than try to make those players play to an absolute structured game plan and do it his way. He let he let you guys play the way you could get the most out of yourselves. Is that fair? Yeah, I'm I pretty smart. You're spot on. you got to think back to We weren't the biggest. In terms of four packs, for example, we weren't the biggest mm. pack. In, and I, you know, I, I put my hand up for that. I know we weren't the biggest pack. And um, However, we were... We were a mobile pack. Um, we knew we had skill. You know, you had guys like Toddy Payton who could. He was who really was a halfback in a front yeah. rowers body. Um, probably one of the most skillful front rowers I'd played with. Mm. Um, you know, so he he utilised his skill to hook up with Benji and then Farrow and um, Prince at the time. Um, however, we were because we were so mobile and we weren't the biggest. We had to move around those big packs like the Broncos and the mm. Storms um, and you know Penrith at the time. Um, so if you watch, and I'm sure you did, you watched a lot of our games. Yep. It's all about bodies in motion. You know, everybody was moving. We weren't, there was no one sitting back and waiting for the next play. It was all about, okay, let's all push up and making sure that, because Benji was unpredictable. We mm. didn't know what the hell, Brent. I don't think Benji knew what he was doing back then. So, um, whereas the good mixture, and this is, again, Sheen's, you know, 
um, experience and, and ingredients was he partnered him up with Princey. Princey mm. was the cool head. Princey was the, the guy that was going to stick to structure and stick to a game plan where we needed to. And on the other side, you had this other kid who was Benji who said, stuff that, I'll just throw the ball or yeah. or run the ball whenever I want, you know, sort of thing. So it was a really, it was a great balance and, and Shanzi knew how to sort of get the best out of best, the best out of those combinations. And, and we mentioned the Roosters before and what Ricky Stewart, and I, I think he had some help there too from um, some, some forwards coaches when he first went into his job at the Roosters, he completely changed the Roosters and the game itself where it was, it was just annihilation. Like their line, <laughs> their defensive line. Yeah. I mean, they just, it was just an absolute blitzkrieg and they, they killed sides. But what you guys did 12 months later in 2005, within 12 months, you changed the game again with how you guys played. Do, do you understand that when you look at 2000, the early 2000s, Roosters, Canterbury, big four packs, destruction at the line, and then all of a sudden West Tigers playing touch footy. Um, I mean, it, it happened all so quickly. Do, do you think you actually surprised everyone and you snuck up on everyone? And um, did, 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 did teams, could you feel it on the field that, that teams were scared of your potency with the ball in hand? Could, could you hear it on the field, the, the chatter and whatnot? Yeah, I think probably later in the year, yes. I think I think so, yeah. I, I, I still you know, remember, I think, I, I don't remember where it was, but it was a bit of a comment. Um, it was one of the papers I remember reading and they were saying, oh, what do you think, what do you think uh, the Tigers, how do you think they're going to come out? And mm. one of the comments was, Mate, we don't know what they're going to do. You yeah. know, you've got kids like Benji Marshall throwing the ball um, behind his um, back or under his arm or whatever mm. he's doing. Then you've got, you've got, um, you know, Todd Payton, who's a front row, throwing the ball, you know, 20, 30 metres, you know, sort of thing. So, you know, you could feel that people weren't, we were, we were very unpredictable. Mm. Um, we didn't have a style. They didn't really know our style at the time. And look, it wasn't attacking style. We'd definitely, you know, Everybody knows that we had an attacking flair, and defence was probably took a back seat sometimes. But um, you know, we, we were good enough. We were, we were just a team that was good enough to score more points and, and defend when we needed needed to. Because you look at some of those scores, people say we weren't a defensive team. But if you go through the season, you look at. I still remember some of the games that we played. Um, well, Brisbane, for example, in the semis, you know, they scored one try against us. We scored thirty four. Yep. Um, you know, you look at you know during the season with. Um, we played Bulldogs, and I think the score was 52-2, uh, or 56-6, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, Homebush, so, I think it was. Homebush. So, there were, if you look through the um, you know, the season, there were games there where we, we put points on and we did defend well. So, we we had a pretty good balance. All right. So, let's let's get to it. Grand final night. It's uh, the, the biggest game of your career. Um, and we spoke about it before. You, you know, all these years of self-doubt, you know, a little bit of jealousy looking at all these other people on grand final night. Um, you went through the absolute darkest times of the Magpies in the late 90s. Um, you would have seen your fair share of struggles at West Tigers and changes at the club and, you know, inner club politics and all these other things. And for, for a kid from Inter who just wanted to tuck the ball in his arm and play football and, and hold the trophy up at the, end of the, at the end of the year, can you explain what it felt like when you knew the game was won which I think came in the grand final after Josh Hanna missed a conversion and you guys went yep. up on the sideline. What did it feel like at that moment when you... Did it sink in straight away or did it take a while? Oh, mate. Yeah, look, I can't... Again, it's almost like you know trying to explain my first grade debut. Um, satis- I don't know. Satisfaction was number one. It was probably the most... Sat- it was the most satisfying feeling that I've ever experienced. Yeah. Um, you know, when I say, obviously, um, sporting-wise, career-wise, um, and then just joy. It was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this has actually happened. You know, I was – I remember they were pulling me off. They were trying to take me off the um, – drag me back on the field because I kept trying to run, but, like, I was celebrating even though we you – know, the hooter <laughs> hadn't – I think when, when Toddy had scored that last try um, – The big hombre. Was, yeah, the big hombre. Would, I was – trying to run back on the field, but they were trying to get me off because Shane was worried that they would punish us or, yep. or penalise us for, um, you know, for you get on the field. So, um, yeah, to put it in words, mate, it was more all about, you know, satisfaction and, and joy. It was it was an unbelievable feeling. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know if I could smile, cry, or, or what it was. It was just um, all those mixed mixed emotions. And, and we talked about before, um, you know, some clubs... Well, most clubs, they go back and, they're, they, you know, the Roosters or whoever it is last year, they, they usually go back to their league's club or they go back to the, their local footy ground and celebrate with the fans. 
How many grand final parties did you guys have? You had one at Leichhardt, <laughs> Campbelltown. You guys were all over the place for about seven uh, days. Yeah, funny enough, we so we went back to West uh, Ashfield Lee's Club. Mm-hmm. Um, we threw machines in the crowd and he did a bit of body surfing. That was pretty. That was fun. Did he? Um, yeah, it was great. It was, <laughs> he loved it. So we <laughs> we went there, uh, and then we ended up at Balmain Lee's Club, um, and we it took us. Oh, 40 minutes just to get up to the stairs and then we end up on the balcony for about an hour just spraying bottle of water champagne to everybody yep. um and that obviously that lasted us till seven o'clock in the morning um however we had to we had to make a trip back to Campbelltown yep. um on on the bus um but the worst part about it was steve noise who was our ceo at the time mm-hmm. um he didn't want us to be drunk or seen we were drinking You're kidding. Because we were, <laughs> yeah so <laughs> So we were pretty hungover, so we all jumped on the bus and he said, look, guys, you're just going to give me four hours. And we were like, are you serious? He goes, four hours, no alcohol. Um, cause so we had the made, we made the trip back to Cowantown Stadium. We did the, you know, the, the trophy, which I, you know, was humbled and proud enough to be able to walk into mm. Cowantown Stadium with the trophy in my hand, which was the most, yeah, proudest feeling I've ever experienced. Um, because, you know, I'd played all my junior football there and I'd played a few grand finals for Winter Cobbies on the, on the same ground. And yep. here I am walking onto the field with a NRL grand, uh, trophy. So that was awesome. You know, I think, um, I can't remember how many people were there, maybe 5,000 people there. Mm. Um, so we did that for a few hours. And then, same, we had to jump back on the bus and we had to do the Balmain, uh, the Leichhardt Oval, same thing. Yep. And then, from, and then we were released to the public after that. And from then we went... Yeah, if we went for a few days, <laughs> having a, celebrating. <laughs> who were the last ones uh, standing? If, without giving away too many details, who were the last uh, ones? I think myself, Daniel Fitzhenry was still... Daniel Fitzhenry. Daniel Fitzhenry. Ring, yeah, he lost his ring on Anzac Parade and some old lady found it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, myself, Daniel Fitzhenry. We had... Um, so, Mark O'Neill, there's a funny one. Mark O'Neill had a bet with one of the guys, his mate. I don't know if he was the licensee or what he did he mm. ran epping pub and the guy had a bet with him um with mark o'neill uh sorry probably maybe around 24 or something like that i can't remember where it was and he yep. said look if you win the grand final i'll i'll shout you um bengali's bucks night because bengali was married and so yeah, yeah. mate three days later mark o'neill rings up the guy from epping pub and said mate are you gonna honor that bet he goes yeah no worries so we <laughs> we spent we spent one whole friday slash saturday morning at epping pub which yeah, I don't know what the bill was, but he, he shouted us and he, he looked after us. So um, that was one of many. And then I, I think we lasted, I think on and off, we went for about three weeks, something like that. So How much sleep did you um, get? Oh, very little. Yeah, <laughs> very little. So I've never I've never enjoyed getting back home ever that much because I was, yeah. yeah was pretty, <laughs> Turn the yeah. blinds down, roll over for a few days. Yeah, so I made the most of it, put it that way. So, look, I, I, I want to go back to, to your individual career a, a bit more. Um, and, and funnily enough, there's, there's a few videos of you scrapping on YouTube, John. Um, so apart <laughs> Not me, mate. Must have been someone else. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. A, apart from the 96 game, which was your debut, which was just total anarchy, um, there's, a, there's a Scandalous versus Justin Smith, who was a, 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 you know, a rock-solid lock forward that played for St. George of the Warren South. That's on YouTube from... 2003. Yeah. There's also another yeah. one where you, you went with Paul Gallon in 2004. Um, but the one I want to talk about is a game against the Dragons at Campbelltown, another Friday night game. And I don't know what it is about Friday night games at Campbelltown. I, I think it's just because we never got any that everyone was so <laughs> fired up. But um, this one's on YouTube as well. So there's a huge fight in the southeastern corner of the ground between John Hopperwadi and uh, Terry yep. Lamy, who was a uh, Steelers junior. They get sent off. Lee Murphy and Darren Senna got sin bin. I don't know how Senna got <laughs> sin bin. That's, that's a shock. And the, yeah. the next play after that, Trent Barrett comes out of the line and hits Justin Doyle off the ball. And I don't know anything yeah. about Justin Doyle, but from what I can see, he's a loose cannon. And Doyle <laughs> yeah. starts just throwing haymakers on Barrett's chin. Now, I don't want to talk about the fight because we've spoken about plenty of fighting tonight, which is fantastic. But what I want to mention is after that next... Um, convention with the referee and the touch judges the kick goes into touch and John Scandalis takes the next hit up now that is that is to me the the that that's your career in a nutshell to me is that 
you put your hand up, even when you weren't involved in, in any of that over that five-minute period, but you took the brunt on that, that next run. And, and going back to that Penrith game as well, I think you had 20 hit-ups, 19 years old against all these hardheads like we talked about before. Did you feel like that was a badge of honour, that, that you took the next run, or was that just kind of you were there, that was your job? Uh, a bit of both, I think, mate. It was, one, it was my job. That was, that's mm. what, I, I, I enjoyed it, to be honest. Yeah. I really enjoyed and I say to the some of the kids that when they ask questions about you know what it's like and what do you need to do to be a first grader, and I said you have to enjoy it. You have to enjoy. It's a bit sound, it might sound a bit crazy, I guess, but mm. um, you you have to enjoy being hit. You have to enjoy hitting. Um, you know, it's, I don't know what it is. You just got that that uh, that challenge in yourself to go. Well, you know what? They're going to come at me as hard as possible. Yep. I know they're I know they're pissed off. They want to rip my head off, but I want to see how far I can get past them, um, yep. you know, and you got to enjoy the, the contact number one, because obviously it's a brutal sport. It's, you know, not out there um, to, to, to say sorry to someone. It's about, okay, this guy's going to kill me and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the same back. So yep. yeah, to be a badge of honor, I guess you could say, but also mate, I just, I really loved it. I really did love it. And um, you know, I, after the game, you look back at it and you go, wow, you know, that was that was so much fun. Let's do it again yeah. sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so no, that's yeah, no, no, nothing. I didn't, I didn't think about it, I guess, at the time. I just I just did what I had to do. And you can see that too on those YouTube clips as well, that after the scrap, you're not short of a, a word with the, with the boys as well when, you, when you're going in, getting warned <laughs> by the ref or whatever. So I guess it's a little bit of that, that on-field. Did, with the West Tigers yeah. as well, I guess this is another question, um, I, I guess. No one really talks about John Scandale is the leader. Were you more like, I'm going to lead by example? Because I know you, you did get to Captain Huddersfield when you went to England as well. Um, and I guess that the question in there is, is, is what was it like to actually lead uh, a professional team onto the field? But did, did you have much to say when you were in that, that captain's role or did you always feel like you were always a leader of the team anyway so it didn't matter if you were captain or not and it was your job to, to lead the side forward? Yeah, pretty much what you just said there, mate. It was, I didn't, yeah, captain's... Captain is, yeah, I, I, I did it with my actions. I wanted to make sure that, um, you know, if I was going forward or doing my job, everyone would do theirs as well. That's, mm. that's that, was, that was me in a nutshell, basically. Um, yeah, well, mate, it's fantastic to captain your team mm. um, as a professional sports person. Definitely, you you know, you get this, I guess, this different sense of responsibility. Um, um, I didn't get to do it with the Tigers, but like you said, I, I felt that I needed to do it as on the field and show them that, if I didn't take a backward step, and that's how I was brought up through my career through Tommy, you know, I never wanted to seem like, no matter how tough I got or how aggressive the game got, I never wanted to show weakness or show that I was going to take a backward step. So, um, and that's yeah. If I if I did that through my career, and that's how I was remembered, well, then I, I'm a happy man. Well, you've done that, mate. Absolutely. And I, I got one more question for you before before I let you go. Um, you played four games for, for City Origin, 02, 04, 05, 06. Now, I, I tried to research this to try to find an article, but I, I, I know for a fact from my memory that before one of these games, and you might be able to enlighten me and tell me which year it was, where the, the New South Wales Rugby League officials came out and said, this is a dead set, absolute, guaranteed <laughs> State of Origin trial. You went out and you were best on field in one of these games. Can you remember which one it was? Because you didn't yeah. get picked and you never got your Blues jersey. Yeah, it was uh, 2002. It was my first yeah. Origin. Yep. Oh, sorry, my first City City game. Where was, was that? Was that Wagga? Where was Where was that one? Correct. Yeah, it was Wagga. Yeah, it was Wagga. So I remember. The, um, yeah, I remember the clear. They're pretty. You're pretty spot on. They came in. Phil Gould came in and spoke to us and and said, "Yeah, this is basically a dead set um, trial match for the the Blues." Um, and I thought, "Wow, got to give everything here." So. Lucky enough, like you said, I had a pretty good game. I think I scored a try that night as well. Um, and um, it just wasn't to be. You know, look, people say, do you regret it? I don't regret anything because um, yeah. I gave I gave my best well, shot. it's not your it, fault, you know? right? Yeah, so I don't regret not being picked. I, I definitely, you know, I guess um, uh, not regret that I didn't play. What's the word I'm looking for? I, you know, I'm sad that I didn't get to play it mm. um, because it would have been a sensational experience to represent your state and then hopefully have a chance to to make a, a name of myself in, in terms of the Aussie squad as well. But, um, yeah, no, look, it just wasn't meant to be. At that time, I think the Blues were winning anyway, so mm. it, it would have been pretty hard to change the team um, anyway. So, 
Uh, but I, I'm just glad that I, I gave it every shot to, to get myself a spot in there. It would have been nice if Gus didn't come in and say that before the game, though, surely. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, who knows? I probably wouldn't have played as good then. Yeah, maybe that's maybe. maybe that was a good, maybe that was a good thing. So everyone, everyone remembers me for not being picked because I played so well. So maybe I wouldn't have got that tag. So it's, it works out. It worked out pretty good for me. So um, yeah, it is what it is, mate. You can't, you know, if I don't, if I look back on those things and dwell on it too much, I'd have a, a pretty, you know, I'd be disappointed all the time. So I don't. Yeah. I don't um I don't dwell on it I I again I go with the, the mindset of I did my I did the best I gave myself the best opportunity to pick to be picked mm. and then unfortunately I and unfortunately at that time I wasn't so yeah, there's not much I can do about it. If you if you stepped outside of yourself for a second and and just put your your footy hat on for 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 a minute, I'm going to ask you a hypothetical which might be hard to answer, but. Mm-hmm. If John Scandalis was a Queenslander, how many games would John Scandalis have played for, for, for the Maroons? <laughs> uh, I don't know, mate, because that's, hard. that's, a, that's a hard one. Because <laughs> if you think about the Queenslanders that put that jersey on, uh, mate, you're talking your Webke, Sin of Seavers, um, yeah. who else? You know, there's Talos. There's Martin Lang and all these other boys. Martin yeah. Lang, mate. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of good players, great players who have played for that, that team. So who knows, mate? I'm not. I don't know, uh, I'm probably not a, not the one to answer that. I reckon that's a tough one. You're a humble man, John yeah. Scandalis. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, John. Thank you very much, mate. I do appreciate it. Um, and we'll get you on again very, very soon. And we, we do appreciate your time tonight. John Scandalis, you're Hello. a legend. It's been a fantastic chat. Um, and there's plenty more to talk. As I said, we'll get you on another time. There's plenty more to, to chat about. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. It's been fun.